It is now sadly official that as of July 2nd, the PlayStation 3 Digital Store will be permanently shut down. Now you'll still be able to re-download games you purchased before, but if you wanted to buy a couple of games after that date, well, that is unfortunately not going to be possible. And it is because of that, my friends, that we have got to stick together and inform our lovely PlayStation comrades about those incredible games that they absolutely should have in their collection before the store shuts down. So, hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back. And in this emotional roller coaster of a video, because it's not something we want to talk about, right? The fact that the store is shutting down, but being positive, let's talk about some games that I personally think should, without question, be a part of your or somebody else's PS3 digital collection. So if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe, give me that thumbs up, and people, this is when you gotta throw down that incredibly large list of games in that comment section. Inform everybody, myself included, of the games that we gotta buy before the store goes goodbye. It's really hard to believe that many of the games that I talk about here on the channel are over a decade old, and that is the case with Harcorp's Uprising, which is available on PS3 and Xbox 360. I believe the digital price for this game was or is about $15, but hey, I actually got this game for free as part of PlayStation Plus, and the fact that I am still subscribed to PlayStation Plus means that I still get access to games like this in my PS3 collection. As you can see based on the gameplay, this is essentially a modern Contra game. And no, I'm not talking about that one. And I'll be honest in saying that historically, I don't have a lot of patience for these types of games that are all about dying over and over and memorization and just overwhelming difficulty, yet there's just something special about this game that keeps me going back. Developed by Arc System Works, who also work on games like Guilty Gear, you can see how beautiful this game is, because in a time where people talk about games like Dragon Ball Fighters and other games that do an incredible job at recreating the anime style, but in a video game, hey, this game did it in 2010 or 2011. What I really like about this game is that you have multiple ways to experience it. If you want to check out a more traditional style of gameplay, just head on over to arcade mode and then you're going to get that. But hey, if you're like me, you are just awful at these games and you don't feel like you're getting any better, you get fed up and then you shut the game off and never go back. And that is where the rising mode comes in. What that does is that as you play the game, you actually gain credits. You can use those credits to upgrade things such as your health, weapons and upgrades, so you actually feel like you're getting better at the game, but it just turns out you have much stronger weapons. This game is definitely worth being part of your digital PS3 collection, and I'm a little bit frustrated because I had actually gotten a couple of upgrades in that rising mode, but that was in my old PS3 hard drive, which got corrupted and I was an idiot and forgot to upload the save to the cloud. But honestly, I don't even mind that. I don't mind the fact that I'm pretty bad at the game, I can barely progress, but it's just a nice pick up and play experience. And hey, maybe you're like me and you actually got this free as part of PlayStation Plus. So my suggestion is make sure to check out your digital PS3 library, which is pretty hard to actually get access to. They just make it really difficult. But if you don't have it as part of Plus, definitely get it before we say goodbye to the store. Super Stardust HD. I actually talked about this game over a year ago, or at least some guy named Epic JC did, but given the situation, I definitely thought it was worth bringing up again. Released in 2007, you can find this game for about $10, and it is easily one of my top 5 favorite PS3 games of all time. Keep in mind that we're talking about 2007, where, yeah, a lot of games were either 720p, 1080p, but the frame rate was all over the place. And this game, as you can see, ran at a glorious 60 frames per second, and it still looks incredible. It's an arcade-style twin-stick shooter that keeps you going from planet to planet, and at the end of each level, you encounter a boss. But before you even get to any of that, you have a ton of debris that you gotta take out, enemies that you have to destroy, and you do that with a nice selection of weapons. Each one starts out pretty basic, and they tend to be better with specific enemies or debris. But as you continue to progress, you can choose the ones that you want to upgrade, and you do that by being very aware of certain icons that are on screen that highlight which weapon you want to upgrade. You can also get shields, bombs, and even dash, which is an incredible ability. It's especially useful when you have 
a lot of enemies on screen, or you're simply feeling overwhelmed and you don't want to break down that combo because if you get destroyed, you still have a couple of lives remaining, but that combo meter goes all the way down and that is just infuriating. This one made me fall in love with arcade style twin stick shooters because up until this point, I had not played Geometry Wars on Xbox 360 and I ended up playing this one for hours upon hours. And I guarantee you friends, if you get a digital copy of this game, you will not be able to put it down. And hypothetically, even if you don't get it on PS3, it is also available on the PS Vito. Okay, well, it's available on the PS4 once eventually the PS3 and the Vita stores go down. Blaze Rush is one of the more available games on this list as it's also out for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, PC, and other consoles. This is a combat racing game that I had gotten as part of PlayStation Plus, but honestly, I had it as part of my collection, I saw the logo, and I was thinking to myself, this is going to be awful, but one day, I was streaming live on Twitch and I thought, hey, why not just download a couple of different games, and this one blew me away because I went from playing it for a couple of minutes to ending the stream and continuing to play the game. Released in 2014, its top-down camera is very different from what we're used to with a game like Twisted Metal where the camera is behind the vehicle. Here it's a lot more like arcade games or Super Nintendo games and I like this because it's very different. It's party oriented so you can be playing this game with friends and everybody sees the same action. Something that I love about my time with this game is simply how short the races are. Each one ends in just a couple of minutes and the gravity and the weight of each vehicle is awesome and there's actually a nice selection of vehicles because whether you want something that's fast but can easily be taken off track or you want a thicker beefier vehicle that's a little bit harder to control but you're not going to be pushed off the side as easily this game gives you all those options Each track has different boosts and weapons, and that's what makes this game very difficult and surprisingly challenging and strategic. I was telling myself initially, okay, so I'm first place, I'm guaranteed to win the race. That's not necessarily the case. Because you have all these weapons, being in first place means that you're an easy target. So I actually often found myself being second place more, and then just as I'm turning around in that last lap, boom! I get the enemy, I take it out, and I still end up second place because I'm bad at it. Also, something that blew me away, the online still works. And that's the case with a couple of PS3 games that I'm not sure what's going to happen eventually with PS3 games like this that are still online because, yeah, there's sometimes only one room or two players, but there's something amazing about going back and playing one of these games, not expecting anybody to be playing it. But hey, look at that. It is still functional. So definitely consider buying Blaze Rush if you're looking to play a pretty simplistic arcade style game with those combat elements that it is simply so satisfying. When I think about awesome puzzle games, I think about Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. This one's also available on Xbox 360 and is backwards compatible on Xbox One. This HD upgrade is based on an incredible game that came out in 1996 because when talking about Street Fighter, it seems like we definitely got a couple of variations of it. We have things like Pocket Fighter, we also have Street Fighter 2 the movie based on the movie which is based on the game, and then we have something like this that takes very familiar characters and puts them in a completely different genre. This reminds me a lot of Tetris Attack on the Super Nintendo. That is one of my favorite games for the console and for good reason, it is just so satisfying to play. You prepare a row or a white area with gems of a particular color. You can maneuver yourself around to get ready for awesome combos and then once you have something nice set up, you can watch them all blow up with a special drop. What's incredible about my time with this game is that yeah, the gameplay is awesome, but that's not why I keep coming back to this game. It's all about that amazing soundtrack. I mean, just, just check this out. And don't think that this version of the game is a cheap copy and paste job. They rebalance some of the characters, but if you want to play the original version, all of those options are there. 
and I think this game has something in common with Super Stardust HD. I don't think these are games that you go back to every single day, but they are video game comfort food. When you want to play a game for 10, 20, 30 minutes, even an hour, and you want to disconnect from something else, this game is going to be there for you. It is going to emotionally heal you, and that right there is why I think you should get Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. If I say supersonic, acrobatic, rocket-powered battle cars, what comes to mind? What if I told you that before Rocket League, those same developers made a similar game that was exclusive to the PS3? Released in 2008, this is easily one of the most surprising games out there because I had no prior knowledge about this game. Unlike the other games I've talked about in this video, I haven't played this one enough to be able to have a strong opinion about it. But here's the thing, not only is this game exclusive to the PS3, at least to my knowledge, this is digital only. So whether we're talking about a bad game or a good game, after that date that Sony announced, uh, this one's not going to be available. And I think there's something to say about historical games in any given console, and we can't deny the overwhelming impact that Rocket league has had in overall gaming history yet look in 2008 they were already working on rocket league so if you're curious and you want to check out the game that came before a rocket league then definitely get a digital copy of supersonic acrobatic rocket powered battle cars man between this and super puzzle fighter it's like i should have switched these out but what matters is that you can still buy this game unless you're checking out this video after the store shut down Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mystera is an awesome collection of beat-em-ups created by Capcom. This one is available on other consoles and PC, but it definitely feels at home on the PS3. This one includes two games, which are Tower of Doom and Shadow over Mystera. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this compilation, I thought it was actually a modern take on older beat-em-ups because I had no prior knowledge about these games. These first came out in the mid-90s and wow, I honestly can't believe how good they are. I've talked about the fact that I love a game like Knights of the Round. It's one of my favorite arcade games and Super Nintendo games, but this one is like that taken to the next level. Not only do you have your traditional beat em up mechanics and wide selection of characters, there are RPG elements, items, special abilities, boss fights, cutscenes, and so much other stuff that I just could not believe I never played this before. And if that was not enough, this compilation does something awesome that I feel was made popular because of games like Years of War, which is being able to see your progression that leads to trophies or achievements. And because this is a classic 4x3 game, they actually use the sides of the screen to show you all of that information. More so than the games themselves, you really gotta give Capcom credit, somebody clearly cared about these two games. The gameplay is responsive, the graphics give you that nostalgic vibe, and it is a solid and very difficult experience that will keep you coming back time and time again. Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mysteria should definitely be a part of your digital PS3 collection. Now as a bit of a bonus, I did want to let everybody know the PS3 store does have a couple of demos that are worth checking out. A big example is Folklore. This game came out within the first years of the console, and I'm actually going to be dedicating a full-blown video about this game because I'm playing through it right now as part of my 2021 backlog. And I just gotta say right now, I am being blown away by this game. And physically, it is not cheap, people. The price is definitely going up. But if you'd like to get a taste of this game, you can definitely go online and check out the demo. Unfortunately, there's a lot of games that were exclusive to the PS3 that, even though they got a physical release, they never got a digital version. And games like this are an unfortunate scenario where it is without question a game that you should experience, but there's no actual way of going about it unless you spend a lot of money or explore other methods. We can make a list of 40, 50 games. As a matter of fact, a huge shout out to Radical Reggie. He made this incredible video of over 50 PS3 games that you should definitely buy. There are some games out there that are as low as just two to three dollars, like that supersonic acrobatic demolition derby game. That's only like three dollars on the PlayStation Store. And as a matter of fact, uh, I've talked about MotorStorm Apocalypse before on the channel. You can get this for 10 bucks. And if that was not enough, this right here, I was blown away when I was browsing the store 
10 bucks, people. These are three top-notch PS2 games. And if you look up Jack and Daxter, just like this, you can find it, and that is an incredible price. So I invite everybody to just browse around in the store. There's many different ways you can find games, and it's not super obvious, right? One of the best ways is to go down to games, and then once you pick a particular genre, like let's say we go with action adventure, when you go on filter, when you go through game type, that's when you can actually filter games based on if they're for the PS1, if they're for the PS2, PS3, Vita, and that will definitely give you a better idea of some of the games available. And then afterwards, you can head over to sort and sort based on oldest first, which is really good if you want to have a lot of games that came out within the first few years of the PS3, you do that. Or if you want to check out the later games, or you want to find the best deals. It's like, hey, I'm on a tight budget, what's out there? And even if there's a game available for free, that's actually going to be a choice as well. And the last thing uh, that I definitely want to make sure I invite everybody to do, if you have a game, consider the fact that when the store shuts down, so will possible DLC that you can purchase. I talked about Folklore, and while browsing the store, I noticed the game actually has some DLC, and it also has some free ones. So I invite everybody uh, to do that. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, please go down to the comments section and share a list because it's not easy to really pick and choose what is exclusive digitally on the PS3. It's just not obvious. You can filter by uh, discs and all that, but there are so many different variations and I know that a lot of us, we love this console, and the fact that this is happening is very saddening, but hopefully this video opens up the conversation in the comment section for other people to share all of these uh, great things. So if this was helpful, consider subscribing, give me that thumbs up. I also have a Let's Play channel over at youtube.com slash playerhuanplays, so consider following me over there. So up until next time, thank you for watching and supporting, and take care, everybody.